I think America's gone crazy. What about you? How on earth have we arrived at a place where we've arrived? When you heard the news, uh, was it Thursday or Friday that you heard that news about what happened in Connecticut? It's insanity. And that's what I want us to talk about today. How do you get from where we are or where we were to where we are right now? Talk a little bit more later in this lesson about the history of this land. But how on earth did we arrive at a place where it's insane? Years ago, folks didn't have much education, but they had morality and compassion and care and understood this world. And now we've arrived at the place where it's just insanity, everything that's going on. Now I want to help you try to understand this. You've got to have your Bible this morning. If you don't have a Bible, pick up that pew Bible and go back to page 999 I want to show you how the Bible says we arrived at this place. There are about nine or ten things in Romans chapter 1 that I want us to look at because, because it describes what's happened even before Paul's day. You know, there was a time when there was righteousness on this earth. There was righteousness in the Garden of Eden and there, there was righteousness whenever they came out of the ark and there we're more righteous people than ungodly people. And how do you get to a world that is so perverted and so sick? You're starting in verse 18. Verse 18 says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against ungodliness. You look at verse 18 and it says that the wrath of God is revealed against ungodliness. Why? Well, because verse 20 there was a time when that world described in Genesis chapter 1, or pardon me, Romans chapter 1, there was a time when they knew God. I want to ask you something. Was there a time when this land knew God? I'm not talking about having perfect understanding, but was there a time when, when we thought of this nation as being a godly nation, a God-fearing nation? You study the history of this land and you look at this matter when they knew God, the Bible says, number two, they did not glorify Him as God. Paul in Romans chapter 1 is describing the Jewish world. We're not going to spend a lot of time studying the book of Romans. Later on, if we have time, we'll look at how he says the very same kind of thing happened to the Gentile, to the Jewish world, to those who were at Mount Sinai. And there they were, and they got so sin sick. We'll look at the description of what happened there. But this is far more graphic. You know the, do you know the first step away from God? The first step away from God is to fail to glorify God. I want to ask you something. Has that happened in this land? Profanity. I want to tell you something. God's last name does not begin with a D. You and I need to understand that there's a holiness and sacredness to this. And the flippant way that when people, you know, when, when, when any unusual thing without any regard at all to what they're saying, the common expression, oh my God, no holiness, no sacred regard for God. When they knew God, they failed to glorify Him as God. You want to know how this land arrived at the place where it arrived. There might have been a time when in ancient, when in other lands, when people sneeze, people said, God bless you, and they meant it. But now it's just a reaction without any recognition of the glory of God. You stop and think about the road away from God comes whenever they do not glorify Him as God. Number three, they're not thankful. 
Paul says when they knew God, they started down a path that was leading them away from God, and that is the inability to be thankful. There was a time when thanks was given on thanksgiving. But now, we think of thanksgiving and wonder, is it uh, Dallas or Washington that's going to win that day? Have I got the right teams? Thanksgiving. And so here were people knowing there was a God, failing to glorify Him as God, and turning so they're not thankful In everything, give thanks. A prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. I've told this story, and I don't hesitate to say it, tell it again, because I think it illustrates exactly what's happened in America. The old country bumpkin went into the city some time ago and went into a restaurant and he started eating. And the sophisticated ones at that restaurant looked at him because before he ate, he bowed his head and prayed. And the sophisticated one says, does everybody do that where you come from? And his answer was, everybody except the hogs. (laughs) We're the fattest nation on earth without any regard for the fact that in Him we live and move and have our very being. You throw a slice of meat among a pack of dogs and you put Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner before a family and there's no difference at all in America what happens Animalistic. Because there's no longer a God who is supreme for whom we ought, to whom we ought to be thankful. Number four, they became futile in their thoughts. The old King James says, they became foolish in their reasoning. How many times over the last few days as you've watched television and heard people talk about how many idiotic things have you heard discussed about how to solve this matter? Folks, this matter is not going to be settled in America by people going to psychologists. It's not going to be settled in America by greater education It's not going to be settled in America by human wisdom at all. And you think about how stupid our world has become. If we found life on Mars, imagine how this world would just explode with preservation of the life found there. And yet nearly 40 million times Our nation has approved legally, legally the abortion of life far greater than some life, primitive life they might find in a distant world. Life that is vibrant, life that develops, life that grows, life that has a soul and to snuff out the life of that soul inside the womb. How foolish can you be in your reasoning that a fertilized egg buried in the sand on the beach is worth at least $10,000. And a fertilized egg in the womb is a non-entity because the selfish attitude of a mom who says, it's my body, I'll do what I want to with it, I want you to know it's your body But that's God's child inside your womb. Foolish in their reasoning. Number five, and their foolish hearts were darkened. 
Is our world dark? You think of the fact that the Bible describes knowledge of God as light. And yet the God of this world has blinded those who are in the world. And hearts are darkened. It's not just the black gothic attire that's worn by some who are apparently misfits in our society. It's the darkened heart. that covers this land. Number six, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. We'll talk later about where wisdom comes from, but would you tell me how any godless person has wisdom if the fear of the Lord is where it all begins and we live in a nation that knows God but does not glorify Him as God and has no fear of God. Can you tell me how there's any worldly wisdom to be found out there? Stop and think about it. We have elevated things and say therein is found wisdom. Some Hollywood movie star who has grown up in a home that is a misfit home so many of the times and has gained some notoriety in, in cinematography, having some knowledge about what this nation needs politically, there's darkness. In this land. And there's foolishness in the heart of a nation that cries out, there is no God. From the creation of the world, verse 20 says, since God created the world, you can know by the things that have been made, there is an eternal God and deity who has eternal power. I believe it was 40 years ago, this very day, that the astronaut, I believe his last name is Cernan, is that right? The last one to stand on the moon. And he said about standing there, beholding the earth from the moon, there's no doubt there is a creator. But there's no God in the heart of America. And verse 23, number 7. They change the glory of God, an incorruptible God. Stop there for just a moment. They change the glory of God. We sing it, do we not? The Lord is in His holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before Him. Hallelujah. Praise Jehovah. We sang it this morning. Kings and all of you people, princes great and small, there is a God and His glory is exalted. But you change the nature of God and the rest of this looks at the matter of idolatry, changing that which is, which is 
majestic into that which is material? I ask you, what is the God of America? What is it that our nation admires? What is it that it craves? What is it that it covets? What is it that it seeks after? Not a glory of God, not the glorious Almighty Creator, but material things which from the moment you first own them, they lose their splendor because there's something out there on the way far better than what you have. Look at verse 24, and we'll come back to that in just a minute. God gave them up. Look at verse 25, number 8. They exchanged the truth of God for the lie. Can God lie? Are the words that He says truth, absolute truth? Think of all of the precepts that's found in the Bible, all the moral teaching. Think of all the great things that are found Truths, eternal truths from the creator of the world, from he who is the way, the truth, and the life. And flippantly, even some who purport to be Christians says, well, I know the Bible says that I don't believe it. You know what you've done? You've headed down the road to the path that leads this nation away from God that says the truth of God is a lie. And number nine, they worshiped and served the creature. The old King James says, the creation more than the creature. The creator who is blessed forevermore, amen, so be it. Worship and serve the creature. How self-centered have we become as a nation? And our service has so little to do with I'm here for the express purpose of glorifying my Creator and exchange that for I will choose if I glorify Him and I will choose when I glorify Him And it is an optional thing. And I am in charge of my life. Don't you try to tell me how how and when God ought to be glorified. The creature, self-centered society. We've created a world in which we're oftentimes teaching our children not to be concerned about others. Not to look outward at others but to look at themselves and to satisfy every longing that they they may desire. Worshiping and serving self rather than the Creator. And verse 26 says, God gave them up to vile passion God finally said, when you arrive at that point, then sexual immorality is where you'll end up. The manifestation of the degradation of the Gentile world was sexual perversion. Is America perverted? You look at the rest of that verse and the verses that follow, and there you see where America is. And the verse says, God gave them up. You see that? Verse 28, God gave them over. 
God gave up on them when they gave up on God. And when God is not welcome in Sodom, He has no desire to be there. And not just homosexuality, but fidelity in marriage. And the matter of sexual purity. As opposed to fornication and adultery and one night stands. Who's the quarterback for Kansas State or Kansas? Colin Klein, is that his name? Came in third on the Heisman. Decided I'm going to be pure. And I'm not going to kiss a woman until my wedding day. How foreign does that stand in your view of America? How odd is the purity of the lives of a Tim Tebow mocked and the world awaits for him to make a mistake. How perverted is our land? When the Gentiles arrived at this point, God said, I give up on you because you've given up on me. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach unto any people. Look at that next slide. Look at all, the next one please. Look at all of the things. Which one of those is not America today? And the last words, God gave them up. How long, O Lord, how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not avenge this nation for its wickedness? What's happened to America? Three things. America has lost its compass. Get in a boat and go out here into the Gulf Stream. Get away from the side of land. And let's see you find it. Let's see you find the harbor again without a sense of direction. Be flying in a plane. Let all the electronics that are there in the midst of the darkness of night traveling across the ocean find your way to the port of safety. You look at the history of this nation and where we are. I want you to know there is a moral standard There is a compass, and it is an absolute moral standard. Would you underline in your heart and in your mind, it's absolute. God cannot lie. You want to see where America is whenever the Bible is, when it's not welcomed in the school. When the time is on the horizon that even the church itself will be be punished in this land for teaching the truth about morality 
and godliness. To read what the Bible says about homosexuality is not a hate crime. It is a love message from God of absolute truth. And to honor the purity of the Bible and the life that's found in the Bible, to honor that is not perversion, it's truth. And it's absolute. I want you to listen to the absolute nature of what I'm about to say and don't you ever forget it. Absolute. It's always, that's absolute. It's always right to do right. And it's always, that's absolute. It's always wrong to do wrong. It's never, that's absolute. It's never right to do wrong. And it's never, that's absolute. And it's never wrong to do right. And that's absolutely right. Because the Bible is absolutely right. You get away from your compass. You arrive where they were in, described in the book of Judges in two plays. Chapter 21 is the one we'll put on the screen that says, The children of Israel departed from, from there. Uh, at that time, every man to his tribe, to his family, they went out there. Every man to his inheritance. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which is right in his own eyes. If that's not a description of America, I know not what it is. You try to verbalize in the workplace absolute nature of the truth of God and you will be mocked. Why? Because America's gone insane and the world that is around us is bought into it. Well, that may be your truth. That's not what I believe about it. And every man does that which is right in his own eyes. The second thing America has lost is its conscience. A conscience of morality that whenever I have done wrong, that which I have taught myself is wrong begins to nag at my brain and begins to punch at my soul and to pierce my heart saying, you've got to change, you've got to change. You're not, what you're doing is not right. You've got to change. Understand, the conscience is something that's educated. It's not inherent within us. It is not in man that walketh to direct his own step. But by imbibing and drinking of the truths of God and growing up in a nation where sometimes there is morality to be found or growing up in a home where there is some morality, we have a conscience. And the old Chinese proverb depicts the conscience as a triangle that rubs its points against the soul every time you do wrong. And it begins to whirl and the points of the triangle hit against the soul. I've done wrong, I've done wrong, I've done wrong. You know what happens in the proverb? The points wear off. And we've lost our moral conscience. We have lost the ability to blush. There's no shame anymore. For what one does, Jeremiah chapter 6, the prophet Jeremiah describes Israel. Were they ashamed when they committed these abominations? No, they brag about it. Let me tell you how drunk I got. Let me tell you about the party I went to. Let me tell you what happened at the club last Saturday night. Let me tell you. No shame at all. They were not at all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. We've lost our conscience. and Therefore, we have removed any sense of guilt as a nation. 1 Timothy chapter 4 says that in the latter time, some will depart from the truth 
Look at verse 2, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. In the Old West, when they would brand the cattle, they'd take that symbol made of iron and put it in the fire, heat it up red hot, they'd lay the the the, uh, the bull down the, the whatever cattle whatever part of their cattle were laid on the ground and they'd take that iron red hot and push it down against the flesh of that animal. It burned the flesh so much there were no nerve endings left in it, and you could touch where the branding iron had seared that fle- the, the flesh of that animal, and there's no sensitivity. And folks, that's what happens to your conscience. That's what's happened to the consciousness in America, to the conscience in America. There's no sensitivity. Christians see people doing this, and we say, why? Why? And the world says, why not? And we excuse every sort of ungodliness without ever understanding the truth about the solution to the problems in America and that truth found in this absolute compass. When this compass gets in the heart of Americans, when it gets in the homes of America, when it gets in the schools of America as it once was, The thing on Facebook said, why didn't God do something about what was happening in the school? And the retort from God was, I would have been there, but I'm not allowed in the school anymore. And school administrators, school administrators, and boards of education, and judges in our land, And those who mock the principle that we are endowed by a creator which we once believed as a nation will answer to God for the removal of God from our society. the brazen immorality of Jezebel in the Old Testament is the brazen immorality of our perverted land. There's no shame anymore for evil action. And when you lose your conscience, You developed an animalistic attitude that demands immediate satisfaction. You get rid of your conscience and there's no difference from you than a wild beast who lives in his world Whatever is there, he wants and he takes it for himself. He has no conscious survival of the fittest. Hello? Isn't that a foundational principle of evolution? Embedded in the hearts of those who want to remove God from our society says society is better because of the survival of the fittest and the most animalistic, the strongest, the most cunning is the greatest in our society. I hesitate to say what I'm about to say, but we've arrived at a society that reacts to the world around it like dogs react to a female dog in heat.
animalistic. And not just in sexual things. In the whole world that's out here. In that worldview. We've lost, number three, any view of mor morality or immorality having consequences. You know Proverbs 1, 7 and Proverbs 9, 10. Can you finish the verse that says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of two things. It's the beginning of wisdom. And it's the beginning of knowledge. And our whole educational system, both in formal education in the school and the brainwashing that comes from watching television and letting those commentators on the news form our values and tell us what our values are and the talk shows and those who are notorious as philosophers about life, the Oprah's, the Dr. Fields. If they don't begin with this foundation, the fear of God is the beginning place of all knowledge. There is no knowledge that can be trusted that does not have as a part of it the fear of God. And there is no wisdom that can serve in any guidance at all that does not begin with the fear of God. There are no consequences to wrong anymore. In America? You know Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11? See if this doesn't describe America. Because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set to do evil. And our judicial system has created a world in which that individual is better off in an air-conditioned prison with a full gym, a full library, and a 62-inch flat-screen TV. And he's honored by giving those treasures. And when he gets out, so many times he wants to go back in. And how many individuals have been under life sentence, or pardon me, death sentence, for 15 years? There's wisdom from God. Here's the truth. There's evil in this world. I know you know that, but America doesn't. America thinks the problem in, the, in America is poverty. If we can just get more money, get more money, money, we'll solve all of this. If we can give more education, it's going to solve it all. You will get somebody talking to somebody uh, lying on a psychologist's couch who doesn't even believe in God. That'll solve it every bit. Folks, the problem in America is sin. And the evil and, the, and that which plagues our nation is an absolute direct result of sin. There is evil. And until Washington recognizes it, until the Supreme Court recognizes it, until the judges across our land in the, in the lesser courts, until they recognize the reality that there is sin, there is no hope for America. I close by reading the description of the Jewish world who stood at Mount Sinai who when they knew God glorified Him not as God became foolish in their reasoning. Here are different words. 
Does this sound like America? Romans 3, verse 10. There's no righteous, none righteous. No, not one. There's none who understands. There's none who seeks after God. They've all turned aside. They've together become unprofitable. There's none who do, does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb with their tongues. They have practiced deceit. How many politicians do you trust? How many car salesmen do you trust? How many ads that appear on the screen that says, and I've got good news for you, if you respond within the next five minutes, we'll double what we've offered to you. Deceit. And then you get it in the home. They've practiced deceit. The poison of vipers is under their lips. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet, hello Connecticut, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. The way of peace they have not known. And there's no fear of God before their eyes. The Bible describes Lot as being righteous and of his soul being vexed as he lived in that city and saw the immorality that was there. My soul and your soul is vexed. What on earth has happened to America? Listen, the only hope for Sodom was the righteousness of Lot and his family. And when you leave in just a few minutes, I want you to take a good look at all of those who walk out of this building for you. For the only hope of America is the righteousness that's within the heart and the homes and the souls of those of us who are here. There's hope for America, but it's not found in education and money and political astuteness. The hope for America is found in those of us who take the moral conscience, moral compass, and it becomes the basis of our moral consciousness. And it keeps us morally right because there's consequences to righteousness and unrighteousness. But where are you today? The only hope for godly in America is godliness that comes from believing in Jesus, from repenting of our sins, from confessing our faith in Jesus. The words are there. The compass is there from being baptized, from being added to his family, to his kingdom, to his church. That's truth. It cannot be wrong. It's the moral consciousness of, it's the moral compass of God that says, you do this and you be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. How can this church help you go to heaven? Won't you let it be known by coming to the front right now as together we stand and sing. Will you come?